Hey travelers, Marcello here from Wandering Trader. Today I have two locals, a new local, a birth local, and we're gonna be talking about the best things to do in Mexico City. So I have a list here, some of which I have not done. Neither has the local, but the new local <laughs> has done. So I'll let her explain the ones that she likes and doesn't like. I may leave some stuff out on the list, so I'm sorry if I do for those of you guys that are Mexico City fanatics. Uh, just to start off, I didn't like Mexico City in the beginning. It, to me, it was a really chaotic city. There's traffic everywhere. But I've been here now, what, like 10 times? Yeah. 10, 15, 20 times. And so I'm starting to like it now because you, got, you kind of start to find the charm in the city, so to speak. So the first thing is the Socalo, which is the old part of the city. You've probably been there plenty of times. Yeah, I have. Well, why don't you share your, your well, locals' view of Mexico City? <laughs> well, the Zócalo is uh, one of the most historic places in Mexico City. It's the it's not the center of the city, but it's more historic because all the buildings you can see. All, it, it's it's a mixture of the buildings that we have from when, when the Spaniards came and they conquered us, and then we have uh, actually ruins and and and. and Socalo and some some places because the, the Spaniards they built their own buildings on top of the ruins. It's it's a um, it's a place that you have to go. It's a place that you see in all the sightseeing in and, and, and Mexico and well I think uh, that's about it. I don't know. Just look for the Socalo. If you look for Socalo on Uber, you'll be able to find it. It's a really really big plaza. Hopefully they'll have the construction done by the time you guys arrive. The Palace of Bellas Artes. Oh, so the Bellas Artes Palace is a beautiful building. It's a museum. Yeah. Museum that you, theater. That you, for free? No. How much does it cost? Ballpark. Uh, you have a really beautiful ballet, uh, Folklorico, it's called here, and that costs about 300 pesos and it's really worth seeing. So 300 is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, about 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 dollars for the ballet. There's yeah. also a museum there. And there's also a museum. Yeah. If when you're there in the, uh, the the Bellas Artes and you see the beautiful building, go to the Sears, go to the eighth floor, yep. and there's a there's a cafe that you guys can drink from and you guys can see a beautiful view of the uh, of the city. So check that out. The square where the where Bellas Artes is is called Plaza de la Meda. Plaza de la Meda. So Joseph, make sure you yeah. uh, be careful in Central. We got into a little bit of a inconvenience today. We had the big camera. Why don't you show him the big camera, uh, Joseph? Just, just, um, and and the guy. There was a guy who had a walkie-talkie. They were talking to each other. It, it got a little bit heated, but no trouble happened. So, if you're gonna go from one street to the next, just keep an eye out. I'd go in a group. I wouldn't go with just like a single female, even though she's probably done it. Uh, but just keep that in mind. It's not dangerous. I don't think the city of Mexico is dangerous. It's like any other Latin city. Uh, you can probably chime in on that, you too, even though you're from here. But, you know, it's not Western safe, but it's not Western dangerous either, right? It's kind of right in between where you just kind of have to keep an eye out. And, uh, you know, if you see anything funny, then just, you know, go or, you know, run or however your defenses is. So that's Sokolo, first thing. After that is the castle of... Chapaca, 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 Chapultepec. Uh, Central Park of Mexico City, in the middle of, uh, of the city. It's really, really nice. Anything you wanna? 
That's a, that's one of my favorite places in Mexico City. That's a, you have to go there. It's like a 20, 15 minute walk, up, uh, and it's in the uphill. And uh, that's where the French lived here in Mexico City when this was an empire a long time ago. You can see a beautiful it's a beautiful sightseeing from the city because it's on top, and it's a, there's also a museum, there's a history museum. Yeah, exactly. And that's free, I think. For students, for students. and very cheap. I think about one dollar, so and it's worth definitely worth visiting. So you can go try to go in the morning. It seems like it rains all afternoon here, all the time in Mexico, even <laughs> though it's probably just part of the year. But if you're, th what's the best time to come in Mexico City? When is it raining all the time? What would you say, November? I would say November, and then during uh, April, maybe. Yeah, April. Yeah. So November or April, and if you come any other time, just do stuff in the morning because it rains all the yeah. time, literally on the dot at like five or six p.m. when the clouds are already starting to come in. So that's Zocalo Castle de Chapaca 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 Chapac. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go tomorrow to the San Angel Market. Yes. So that's a really nice market uh, that they have every Saturday afternoon and morning. And uh, it's a very artistic and uh, area and more bohemian area of Mexico City actually. Very nice. So Beautiful houses and nice restaurants as well. It's called, the area is called San Angel and it, there's a, a lot of rich people live there. Like most, one of the most... It's one of the most expensive yeah, areas expensive of Mexico City. So we'll definitely go there. We'll show you guys some footage of that tomorrow. Hopefully we'll make it on time. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm gonna lump food and restaurants in the same box. Uh, I'll show you guys, maybe just or put some of the footage of the restaurants that we've been to. There's a great food scene here. Brunches, Sunday brunches. I now fly out at one o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, so I can go to the brunches here in Mexico City. Uh, why don't you just name some of on the top of your head, like the place that we went to today? Yeah, Husted is one of the places uh, you have. Can you can you say most of them are in, Pol in uh, Condesa. Condesa, Condesa or Roma? Exactly. Yeah, Condesa Roma or Polanco. So uh, just to give you guys a reasonable view. So avoid the places called Doctores of Buenos Aires. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be there, especially at night. So if you see any area within that zone, don't stay there. I would personally recommend uh, uh, Condesa. Condesa, Roma. Condesa, Roma, all the way down to the World Trade Center, anywhere in there. Really, really central. You can get to anywhere you want to go. Condesa, Roma, to me, are the best. It's 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 like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a local, yeah. but 
It's like it's homey. There's trees everywhere. There's two really big parks. Everybody goes out with their dogs. There's cafes everywhere. There's beautiful French and Spanish architecture. It's beautiful. It's, it's kind of a European part of the city where everybody bikes and goes walk with his dog and everything. It just there's a lot of people that they do not live in the city and they go there and spend the weekend there. So go go stay there. Uh, the World Trade Center area I think is more kind of dingy city. Yeah. There's it's 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 okay. It's safe. It's fine, but it's more businessy. There's a lot less trees. You know, it's it's not as homey. Polanco is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, kind of. That's like the Central Park, like like Park Avenue, where a lot of the rich people stay. And then you have San Santa Fe, uh, Las Lomas, and Santa Fe. Santa Fe and Las Lomas is literally way out on the other side of the city, so I don't recommend you staying there. So th those are the areas that I that I recommend. And all the the majority of the food and restaurants, I'll ask Kat for a little list that she can just give me to to give you guys. Most of them are in Condesa and Roma, and Roma split up into north, like north and south, and but most of them are there. So if you're gonna go out and be a food addict, go there and then try the brunches on Sundays because they're great. So anything else about food and restaurants? Cat. <laughs> no. She picks the places. He exactly. just he, he just eats everything. <laughs> yes, and there's a great variety as well of food. You can eat everything and anything at any time. Really good cafes that are healthy. O Ojos de Agua. Ojo de Agua. Ojo de Agua. What was the other one? Uh, La Buena Tierra. La Buena Tierra. They're like organic cafes that are really, really good. Yes. Which one? Uh, yeah. Is that it? Any more? Pegamo in the center. <laughs> <laughs> that one is not in La Condesa, but it's a really nice vegan restaurant. And there's a cat. There's a cat cafe, but I don't recommend you go in there because it's not that nice. Uh, after that, you have museums. So, I think there's a ton of museums to go to in the city. I'm gonna name off a few. I'm probably gonna miss out some of them, right? They talked about the ones in Bellas Artes, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And then there's, uh, so Slim, which at one point was the richest guy in the world, top five for sure. He's created this massive area over in Polanco. There's a free, a free museum there that's Somaya, right? Yeah. Which is dedicated to his wife that died. Uh, you have Fre Freda, Frida Kahlo. Which is? <laughs> which is an art museum. It's the old house of uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, which are really famous painters, Mexican painters. And then you have the Coyacan. Co Coyacan. Coyacan. Uh, the neighborhood and then the museum. So why don't you guys chime in on that? Yeah, so Coyacan is a really nice. It's about 20 minutes away from, let's say, uh, La Condesa, I think, by car. Yeah, 20, 25 minutes yes. with traffic. And that's the museum, uh, Frida Kahlo Museum, is over there. That's the house in which she lived in with her uh, husband, um, Diego Rivia, which who was also a painter. And it's a very nice neighborhood to walk around in, beautiful houses, uh, colorful houses, and a nice little park. Yeah. And even in uh, Polanco, not Polanco, in Condesa and Roma, if you're walking, you'll literally see little side streets, colorful with the old European architecture. Really, really nice. I highly recommend it. Como vamos de tiempo, Yes. Uh, so, is that it? Or nightlife? Ask her. <laughs> no, you're, you were the party animal five years ago. <laughs> well, well, nightlife, Condesa and Roma, of course. Yeah, there's bars, whatever you want to find, bars, I don't know what you like, if you like, uh, if you have a, how do you say this, expensive taste, go to Polanco, if you have weird taste, go to uh, Sona Rosa. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have great bars in La Condesa and La Juarez, which is also an upcoming neighborhood next to La Condesa and La Roma. Uh, great bars with great cocktails, you can drink wine, wine is something that you actually can find here. She's, um, she's, she's from Europe, so yes. she has to have the wine. <laughs> you can find good wine here. <laughs> Mezcal and tequila as well, of course. You can find great cocktails with those drinks in it, those alcohol in it. Um, the, the typical drink from Mexico, mezcal, and now? Yes. Yeah. And te tequila, obviously. Tequila, yeah. yes. Uh, but Mezcal I, is the most popular one, I would say now. And, and if you want to go to the town of Tequila, it's by Guadalajara. So, you know, yes. that's where Tequila comes from, just FY. Uh, beer in Mexico? 
there's a lot, there's a bunch of uh, little places where you can go and buy, uh, how do you say this in English? Home artisan beers. Beer? Uh, art, art, artisan beers. Artisan yeah. beers, which are, they're really good and they're, they're like, they have, there's many, many beers you can taste in Encondesa and Roma, there's a lot of places and most of the restaurants, they have a lot of them too. So anything else about inside the city? Um. I, I will say, uh, why didn't you talk a little bit about public transportation, which is because you know everything about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, here you can quite easily go by Uber, but if you don't have internet outside... Cheap, really cheap. It yeah, is cheap, really it's cheap and it's good. Uh, it's good service, but you can... I mean, I do take public transportation, you just need to be careful. It's she really takes cheap. it and he doesn't. Exactly. And he's, he's the Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> it is really cheap uh, to take metro. There's something called metro bus, which is uh, like a metro, but a bus. So they have their own lane, it goes really fast. And you have sections for women as well, so it's not, I mean, if you're careful, it's not that dangerous. If, if you're planning on staying more, I would say like uh, three weeks and more, more than three weeks, go to, there's a thing called uh, EcoBici, EcoBike, which you get a card, it's really, it's really cheap, and then you can, it's like you, you, you take a bike station from station, and it's, it's yeah, really it's cheap. it's like a city bike, and you have bike lanes in most of these areas that we talked about, Condesa, La Roma, Polanco. So it's quite safe as well. Just be careful. The cars are not so friendly on the road sometimes. Wear a helmet. But, yes. They get they get extra points for hitting blondes. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So that's all the stuff inside the city. There's also a lot of stuff just outside the city. So the first thing is the pyramids of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Footage on the drone, so you guys will see that probably here in a second. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. 40 minutes away from the city without traffic, yeah. it can get up to an hour or two with traffic. So best time to go without traffic? I'll say in the morning after 10:30. On a weekday. During, <laughs> during the week. On a weekday, yeah. So you know, there's Temple of the Sun, Temple of the Moon. I might put some information there, notes about you know. Uh, the, the base of the temple is just a little bit smaller than the, the Egyptian pyramids and at one point this was the tallest structure in the new world before the Europeans arrived. There's a ton of history, it's really interesting. Um, I say that you, you cannot come to Mexico without visiting uh, Teotihuacan, it's, it's, it's like you have to go there. So definitely check that out. It, it's really it's like it's, it's it's really simple. You can go there. There's tons of little uh, stores that people buy. You know, we took a bunch of pictures and photos. It's really nice. Anything else you want to say about the the, the, no, the pyramids? No, that's it. The Nevado de Teluca. I'm gonna hand this over to her because I haven't been. So Nevado de Teluca is. Um, a volcano, I think, yes. isn't it? Yes, with a, you have the crater and it's, some water. It's not active though. No, it's yeah. not active, exactly. And you can go there, you cannot take public transportation to get there. You have to go there by car, rent a car, or by taxi. How long does it take? It takes about an hour, an hour and a half, I would say, to get there from here. So it's a bit outside of the city. And uh, what you can do is either a very small hike, which it takes, when you park, it takes about 20 minutes to get to the top and you have an amazing view of all the mountains and everything. Because there, there's a lake in like, there's a lake, when you exactly. hide, there's a lake. It's very blue to the feet, yeah. And uh, if you want to do the do it a bit harder, you can do a longer uh, hike, which would be, I don't know, I haven't done it before. Almost uh, close to an hour. Close to an hour, where you can see more, a bit more and walk for a bit longer. It's very high up. The, the Mexico City is, uh, is a city which is very high up, 2,500 meters up. So imagine if you're on top of, top of a mountain, so uh, there's not so much oxygen, so prepare yourself before yeah. and wear some warm clothes. Yes, it's yeah. cold and there's the, the altitude is uh, so, something to consider. A lot of uh, professional sport teams, they come here, they spend like a, a month or two and they go, they go and they run there every day just to work on their oxygen and all that. Okay. Yeah, the condition. After that, Valle de Bravo. Yes, so that's more uh, somewhere you want to go if you just want to relax, uh, rent a house on Airbnb on, or other platforms. 
Lay by the pool, there is a nice lake you can go to, you can wakeboard, you can rent a boat, you can... It's something you... I would... I mean, most locals go there actually, uh, and they rent houses, and they go there with friends and family during the weekend, for a few days. No, um, entra, tranquilo. Ah, disculpen, eh? No, no, no. More, more Mexicans. <laughs> Go on. And it takes about two hours to get there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah by car. It, it's like the Hamptons of Mexico City. That's a great way to say it. And, uh, okay, so Tepoztlan is after that. So there's there's a bunch of little towns that you guys can probably find outside the city. Uh, a buddy of mine, Jeremy, drove his Harley to one of these towns outside the city. So there's a ton of little things you can do around. These are probably just the most popular. Uh, one of them is Tepoztlan, which they call the Pueblo Magico. Yes, so that's the magic village. Uh, it's about as well an hour, two hours. Everything is one hour away in Mexico, Mexican time. <laughs> Even within Mexico. Yes. So if you're going from one part of the city to the next, it's gonna take an hour yes. of traffic. <laughs> uh, after that, or anything else about Tepoztlan? It's a very cute city uh, as well. To, you can go there for one night, two days, and just relax. And there, there's also ruins on top of the mountain. Yes. And last but not least is San Miguel de Allende or Allende. Allende. So, this ha picture a Disney World castle, church, and then a completely historic building or historic city around it. It's a lot of expats there. It's very European, very kind of magical. Definitely recommend you guys go there. I think it's about, you said four hours to get, three, four hours? Yes. Anything else you want to say about uh, San it's Miguel? It's quite romantic, I would say, <laughs> as well. <laughs> Rodrigo. Okay, sure. <laughs> so I think we covered everything on the best things to do in Mexico City. Anything you want to add? Come visit. <laughs> yes, come visit and uh, yeah, do some research before because it is a really big city. So if you don't know where to go, it can get dangerous or you can get bad. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I've been around a little bit in the world and the, uh, the thing is that the people, they have a view about Mexico City and it's not like that because she's, she's from Sweden and she, it's like, it's not like you're not in, in, in Sweden walking in the street, but it's, it's really safe. You just have to be, keep an eye on them. The news makes it sound like it's a war zone, yeah. and it is absolutely safe. I mean, I, I go around, even in Central, I was with my phone, no problems. The drone, you know, so do, definitely don't think that it's some kind of war zone, because that's out in the country somewhere. Def I mean, it happens, but obviously, you stay in the right parts of the city, avoid Doctores Buenos Aires, which are two different barrios, and, and you should be fine. Yep. So, Thank you for New Local and The Local for talking about the best things to do in Mexico City. Hope you guys come and uh, see you soon.